Welcome to this edition of Citywide. I'm pleased to be joined by Mitra Kalita, Senior Deputy Editor of the Wall Street Journal's new Greater New York section. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what is the Greater New York section? Well, we already knew New York was great, so this is basically our attempt to make it even greater. Um, our section covers breaking news, real estate news, arts and culture, um, society. It basically covers the everyday of New York life as we live it um, in a way that we felt that the competition wasn't doing that. So why New York City and why now? Well, New York is one of the most competitive media markets, as, as you know. Um, so people you know, have the right to ask why another newspaper on top of the four or five I can already get every day. Um, but of course, between the tabloids, you know, the Daily News and the New York Post and the New York Times, there is a gulf of readers. Um, and we really felt like the Wall Street Journal strategy over the last few years, which has been to uh, get more general interest news into the pages of the paper. So news from Chicago and California and not just the corporate news that the Wall Street Journal has been known for, um, but, you know, breaking news and more political coverage. Um, what was missing from that suite of what we were offering readers, especially in New York, was coverage beyond Wall Street, of beyond the markets and beyond uh, corporate coverage. So this is really a chance for us to get into schools, into neighborhoods, um, into city council chambers, into a city hall. You're doing it at a time when the New York Times has been cutting back uh, on its coverage to the extent that some people joke that they've taken the New York out of the New York Times. You go to the Sunday section, there isn't a single political story about New York City um, uh, in the Times, and their metro coverage uh, has similarly suffered. So is this an effort to, um, to, to really go after the Times and it, in its home base? There's, sure, there's definitely a niche that's presented itself as the Times has taken a more national approach. Uh, to what it wants to do. But I would prefer to look at it as not going after the New York Times, but going after readers in New York who really deserve uh, to be served. So the interesting thing about newspapers scaling back local coverage is that readers are hungrier than ever for hyper-local coverage. So if you look at you know, a parent like me who lives in the city, Every day, you know, I'm on certain websites to see what's going on in my kids' schools, what's going on in New York City public schools. I'm obsessed with real estate, so I'll go to a few websites to see, you know, what's happening to the value of my co-op. And, and so as newspapers across the country have scaled back, people's hunger for information about their communities and neighborhoods has hardly uh, scaled back in the same way. In, in, in fact, the, the, the News Corporation, the, uh, the Murdoch parent um, uh, organization, they have done a roll-up of community newspapers in New York City. Right. Um, and uh, uh, that content, um, as well as the content of the Post, is available to the public for free. But you're a subscription site. That's right. Uh, the, uh, we're a subscription on the website, so there is a paywall. Um, and it has, uh, you know, our editor, Robert Thompson, has jokingly said, well, all of you can still read the New York Times. You can just read it for free and buy us. So um, there is a paywall, but the thinking is that the coverage that you get from the Wall Street Journal um, is an analysis and news coverage that people are willing to pay for. Our, we're one of the few newspapers in the country that's still growing. Um, and that's on the backs of these subscribers who are willing to pay for the news from our paper. To what extent is there is there integration with the other uh, news gathering organizations that are within the News Corporation umbrella? I mean, the Post shares yeah. stories with the Brooklyn paper, right. uh, for example. Do, do you have access to, to that reporting as well, particularly on the we New York stuff? We don't right now. We have a um, staff that, you know, sent out every morning to cover the city, and we don't... Uh, we don't overlap or share coverage with um, the New York Post. Um, you know, might that happen in the future? Possibly, but we haven't. Just you know, to my knowledge, we haven't discussed it yet. Um, there is some uh, link-ups on the, on our website as far as video uh, with what Fox might have, for example. Um, you know, we'll run some of that, and video online is really booming, as you know. So. That's one area that uh, we've already partnered up, and that's actually benefited New York uh, during the Times Square bombings, for example, the Staten Island ferry crash. Um, you know, the, both the national and local affiliates of Fox are able to be in places that we just couldn't, so at least our readers have access to that. And, and are there 
Murdoch-like influences and all of this? Can we expect to see Wall Street Journal headlines, you know, naked shorts streak <laughs> past Wall Street? Um, I haven't, I haven't, I can tell you, honestly, I have not felt it yet. Um, is he very interested in the section? Yes. Um, does he love the city and, you know, really, you know, he's a businessman, so obviously there was a niche that um, he saw, but, you know, maybe you can accuse me of drinking the Kool-Aid, but I see the same niche because I just outlined some of the websites that I'm going to every morning, and I know I'm not served as a news consumer in the city. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm a big advocate of serving our readers, and I try to put that um, at the front of my mind and our reporters' minds every morning and not, um, you know, what headline does Rupert Murdoch want today? So, so walk me through, what's the process of creating a new newspaper? In fact, you're a newspaper within a newspaper. Right. What's the process? How do you, you have the idea, you've got somebody with a checkbook behind you. Where does the staff come from? How many people does it take to run a newspaper in New York? Uh, well, it takes a lot. <laughs> um, the benefit of launching a paper in 2010 uh, was that we had the benefit of hindsight. So you could look back at a shrinking um, media hole everywhere else and kind of say, well, again, as I mentioned, what is not uh, being covered that we can step into? So the Times has a weekly real estate section. The New York Post has some of the best real estate coverage in the city. Um, but we decided to make a property page every single day. Um, so some of it was identifying areas that uh, would, you know, potentially resonate with our target market um, and filling those holes. The other piece of it that you mentioned is hiring. Um, for better or worse, we uh, launched at a time that the news um, industry had been decimated. So it was a real... Um, not a problem of plenty because it's still, I mean, even in a recession, it's hard to find uh, the, right you know, the right people and the right talent. Um, but we were inundated with resumes uh, because there were just so many newspapers and magazines and websites that were folding last year. Um, so in my mind, I feel like we got the best and the brightest who are covering the city. And it's um, a little bit different. You know, I entered journalism during the dot-com boom in 1999 um, and was in the city. And, you know, you could be paid as a journalist to go write about, you know, pets and their boarding or, you know, very obscure subjects. And um, it was such an opposite experience this time around as far as hiring. I, I, I want to touch on something you, you mentioned, you know, making New York greater. So greater New York, it's, it's not just New York, it's not regional New York, it's greater New York is the name of the section. Right. So is there an element of boosterism in that or is it just intended to be a regional description? Well, you know, do we love the city we're covering? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with admitting that, um, you know, I love New York. I was born in Brooklyn, raised partly in New Jersey, raised partly in Long Island. You know, I'm, I'm personally very much a product of this region, and I've lived overseas, I've lived elsewhere, but I keep coming back here. And I, I do think that New York holds, um, it is like a magnet in many ways uh, for some of our readers. And I think we're not, uh, you know, certainly our coverage is, fair and accurate, and you know that is the hallmark of what the Wall Street Journal does. Um, but are we covering New York perhaps more from the inside out than um, some of our competitors? I mean, we hope so. There are, um, as I mentioned, we have a daily arts and entertainment page, for example. Um, that's something I think that's pretty unique to us because we're not just covering, um, you know, reviews of plays or sort of what you see um, before you on stage, but also what goes on behind the scenes. Let's cover institutions and museums and their boards um, and the people that go into making New York this, this so, great place I mean, that it is. It, it sound, almost sounds like you're, you're, you're competing with the New York Observer. Ah, I, I, I really do love the New York Observer, so perhaps there's, uh, I, I don't know if it's, uh, perhaps there are elements there that might, you can draw parallels, yeah. So how is New York City doing? Uh, the economy of New York City, or, well, that's, it, a lot of people did say we were crazy to launch paper at this time because the cities, uh, you know, I pay attention every month when the New York unemployment numbers come out to the information and media jobs, and that's just been slammed. But, you know, I think we're coming out of it. Um, April, uh, I think, posted like five times more job growth than usual. It was more than 20,000 jobs were added, and that just floored me because, you know, I 
Before my current job, I had been handling coverage of the national recession. And, um, you know, you look for a month like that, and it caused economists to say, you know, maybe we're really out of this. Um, the interesting thing is that people are also moving to New York. And whereas, you know, not that New York ever uh, necessarily lost uh, population. I'm not exactly sure of what the numbers are during the boom years. Uh, but now, as a result of New York being New York, people are moving here because they feel like there are at least more jobs here than, you know, let's say a Las Vegas or Florida or some of the Sunbelt states that have been really slammed. Um, this city will always be a creative commons. Um, so we will continue drawing a certain type of person. Um, and that is on New York's side as far as turning its economy around. We're, we're going to continue this conversation about New York City and the new Greater New York uh, Wall Street Journal section when Citywide continues right after this. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Welcome back to Citywide. We're speaking with Mitra Kalita of the Wall Street Journal, Greater New York section. A city like New York is a city of neighborhoods. It's eight and a half million people. Um, but it's, it's many different communities that don't necessarily have an interest in each other. Uh, so when you look at, at, at it from the perspective of a newspaper like the Wall Street Journal, uh, you mentioned real estate before. Aside from the general interest things, what about the business of New York City? It, mm -hmm. is, is, is there a story to be told there? I think there is a story because as the city ponders a future without the Wall Street that we know, certainly will still have Wall Street, but will it be as strong as we've known it to be? It's a big question for the city. Bloomberg has been, as you know, trying to foster small business and entrepreneurship. He's been saying so for, you know, uh, for most of his two term, three term, third term now. So um, a story that we've been trying to get at is how do you make it easier for some of these businesses and the, you know, the maze of licenses and bureaucracy that they must go through in order to open up um, so we, for example, you know, our city hall reporter has been very interested in that, but we also have a restaurants reporter who's able to connect some trends and dots in the various neighborhoods. Um, and I think in many ways that's what the role of a newspaper is in a city like New York, is to be the glue of those neighborhoods. Because, you know, I mentioned how people are getting more interested in their yeah. own neighborhood. Um, but what happens is you almost form this tunnel vision as you're reading your neighborhood listserv and you don't think about the people in Park Slope are going through the same thing as the folks up in Harlem. And Speaking of tunnel vision, one of the criticisms of the media generally uh, in, in the last election was that they bought into the Bloomberg campaign notion that his reelection was inevitable. Um, and as we know, he actually won by the skin of, uh, right. skin of his teeth despite incumbents and the amount of money that he spent. Um, but in the course of that, um, there wasn't a lot of in-depth examination of the Bloomberg record. There was a lot of discussion of the Bloomberg rhetoric, what the kinds of things he said he was focusing about. But I don't know that there was a lot of in-depth look, for example, at whether or not uh, Bloomberg actually had policies that affected small business. So right. are, you, are you looking to dig in the old beat reporters who really mastered their, their subject matter? That's what the hope is. I mean, certainly Bloomberg's third term um, is going to be fascinating because is he going to be, I mean, he still has four years to go and there's already talk of him being, um, you know, how, uh, how effective can he really be? Um, and the candidates for 2013 are actually, they're lined up today protesting his um, attempt to have nonpartisan elections. So you're already starting, we're already starting to look to 2013. And I do think there is, uh, it's incumbent upon the media to sort of say, we not so fast, we have a guy who we still need to look at both his promises um, and his track record here. So I'm still waiting to hear what the headline on his third term is going to be. Um, I think uh, excusably and justifiably, he's been consumed with getting New York out of the recession and um, 
dealing with the fiscal crisis and figuring out, is he laying off firefighters? Is he laying off teachers? What's going to be the story here? So um, we can give him a pass perhaps on that for a little bit longer, but by the summer, once the budgets and so forth are in place, um, I, you know, I would like an articulation of what that third term platform is going to be. Um, and I don't think it can just be less salt in people's food. You know, it's, we're, we are in the middle. I mean, out of recessions, great things can happen. We can, you know, reinvent in many ways. I mean, people talk about the city being reinvented, so let's talk about it. Is it going to happen? And what about at the state level? Do you have uh, people on the ground in Albany? We do. We have an Albany reporter um, who um, is, you know, really, he's, he's very, very good. and. Um, that's another area, though, where as the governor's race heats up, we'll probably be adding some more people um, onto the campaign trails and making sure that we're truly covering greater New York and not just the city. Um, it's getting upstate more. And you know, I want to go back, though, the, what you referred to as the paywall, the fact that people mm. have to, to, to subscribe in right. order to access your, your content. So when it comes to covering New York City, there, there's an awful lot of of coverage, um, and particularly on the political side, you're not just competing with the with the other newspapers, but uh, many of them have blogs or independent blogs like Politico. Uh, but but certainly the 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 you know Liz Benjamin, um, right. uh, who's now working for some Albany media, but uh, was with the Daily News and the Daily Politics and and uh, uh, the Politicker, they are feeding the uh, the folks who follow politics sort of on a full-time time basis. My sense is that the Wall Street Journal's audience are um, folks who are slightly <laughs> less engaged with the city. They may live in the city, they may live in Connecticut or New Jersey or whatever, but they're not um, necessarily engaged with government in the, in the same way. So uh, to, to them, coverage of what's happening in the city may not um, uh, uh, may not capture them any more than the sports section does or the arts section. It's, it's, it's there, it's a diversion from what else they're doing, but you know, is it really going to make them better citizens? Well, I would disagree. I feel like the, the attempt to uh, find out more of what's going on in your neighborhoods, people talk about their playgrounds and you know, parents like us for a long time were very disengaged from politics. Um, it's not until you try to make something happen in your neighborhood that you start thinking, oh, I really better care about who is representing me in Albany and who is my city council member. So, Yeah, but are, I, you, are your readers city residents or, or you know... It, the, it's a mix. The Wall Street Journal base may be people who work in Manhattan, right. but they don't necessarily live in Manhattan. It's a, it's a mix. I think uh, we have a lot of people who also identify as New Yorkers, even if they live in, let's say, Maplewood, New Jersey, or... Stanford or and they so, root for the Giants. Right. I can't explain that one. But you know, so it's uh so we have um, an audience that we're trying to appeal to on the and I think that's where some other real estate and the arts coverage mm -hmm. comes in. Um, that being said, you know, city council our city council report or our city hall reporter rather, um, and we have some general assignment reporters who really are getting into neighborhoods. Um, and trying to form the exact connections that you're talking about. So some of it is serving our existing base, but it's also trying to grow our readership to um, arm them with the tools they need to make informed decisions in, in this city. And the other thing I would say is that um, there's been a lot, a lot of political coverage, and I'm sure you've been through this, where you just wonder who is reading this and who is it for. Mm -hmm. um, I would hope that we are, I mean, again, it might sound idealistic, but why launch a newspaper if you're not going to be idealistic? No. So, <laughs> How is New York perceived as a world financial uh, leader in market? You, you've, you've covered, you've lived in other cities, right. you've covered global economics for the, for the Wall Street Journal. What is the sense, the, the mayor was arguing uh, not long ago that um, uh, too much regulation on Wall Street, this was before Lehman Brothers, too much regulation on Wall Street uh, was going to lead uh, New York to, uh, to uh, lose its position in investment banking and that cities, Abu Dhabi or, or uh, uh, London were going to, to eat our lunch. Is, is, that, is that the way New York is perceived from the outside as a, a target? I do think um, there are threats uh, globally to New York's stature. I, mean, I think 
that is a fair, um, it's a fair concern. Um, you know, I'd like to look at it more from the New York perspective on this. So if you um, think about what Wall Street has meant to the city. Well, if you look at the number of jobs, it's really not gone up that much. What's changed is that the income that Wall Street was bringing in every year and their bonuses and so forth really propped up a lot of the rest of the city. Um, so what Bloomberg is speaking to is this, you remove a piece of it, it has such a domino and ripple effect on the rest of the city. Um, be careful what you are asking well, actually, for, you know, kind of thing. Look, you know, if, if you look at Wall Street in, in employment in terms of the big, the big banking houses, they uh, laid off thousands of people Absolutely. between the, before Lehman Brothers, yep. from 2002 on, as the banks consolidated right. and there became That's fewer right. of them. A lot of that um, talent then turned around to become the new hedge funds and private equity funds yep. and the like. And, in Connecticut. And, 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 and a lot of the job growth has been as, uh, you know, has been in the, you know, that more nimble, nimble sector. Um, but, you know, is, do you think that, that if, if we're going to continue to maintain this competitive edge, Mayor argues it's about lifestyle choices here in New York City. Um, other people would argue it's about national regulation, and if the you know Congress does the wrong thing, everybody's going to move to, uh, to Amsterdam or some other city. Right. So, from your perspective of sort of having covered the global business community, what is it that will make New York more or less attractive? I do think New York um, did put a lot of eggs in one basket when it came to Wall Street. Now, I just sort of defended what the or, you know, not outrightly defended, but I sort of did say. Uh, we need to keep Wall Street here in order to keep many other jobs here. At the same time, there has to be a way to diversify New York's economy almost to what it used to be. And in these pockets of, you know, Brooklyn and Long Island City and Queens, and you're starting to see um, almost these homegrown manufacturing movements and a lot of innovation, the marriage of technology and arts. Um, you know, venture capital in New York compared to what Silicon Valley has been able to attract not as strong here. So are there other sectors that we can now turn to to grow the economy? Um, it seems like for New York, it shouldn't be that hard of a push to get people to want to live here. Um, you know, rare is the person who leaves here because they wanted to. So I, I think it's a twofold mission that the city has right now to both hang on to Wall Street as well as grow other sectors and make it easier to do business in New York. Well, we're going to look to the greater New York section of the Wall Street Journal to find out um, who those new entrepreneurs are and, and what the trends are that uh, they're going to be pioneering here in, uh, in the city. My thanks to Mitra Kalita, the senior deputy editor of the new Wall Street Journal Greater New York section. I'm Ken Fisher. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Citywide.